Okay, welcome back. And in this session, let's talk about observing other people and building sensory acuity. And so the basis of this is when the creators of NLP were modeling Milton Erickson, they realized that people actually make minute changes from moment to moment. And that we can notice those changes if we have enough sensory acuity. Now, these things here listed, these five things are five easy ways of having sensory acuity and noticing these changes or these shifts in the person that we might be working with. Of course, there's lots of other things we can notice as well. But just let's focus on these five things for now. The first is skin color. Now, often people here think that it would have to do with white to red, as you might notice in somebody who's very fair skinned, if they blushed, you would see a redness in the face. Well, imagine that, of course, we've got 7 billion people in the world. And so we've got people of various skin colors. And so somebody who is very dark skinned, we wouldn't actually notice redness. So what happens when the, the blood vessels get filled up with blood, the pigment then changes. And so it becomes darker and not necessarily red. So we're looking for a light to dark. And we might notice this in the cheeks or the tips of the ears or the top of somebody's chest. And like I said, this is just one example of where you might be able to notice that there's a shift within the person. And within context, that may mean a particular thing. The second is skin tonus. And so the best way to think of this, if you could imagine splitting the face down the middle, so you've got the left and the right. That if they looked exactly the same, the left and the right hand side looked the same, then that is symmetrical. If the left and the right side didn't look the same, then that's not symmetrical or asymmetrical. So if you ever saw any of the Rocky movies, Sylvester Stallone is quite famous for the, the maybe the, the left hand side and the right hand side of his lips not being symmetrical. So... Like I said, in one of the Rocky movies, and he's shouting, Adrian, Adrian. And we can see a distinct asymmetry between the left and the right hand side of the face. Of course, with breathing, we can look for location as well as rate. So the client might be breathing high up in their chest, and the breathing moves and changes and goes either to the middle of the chest uh, or down to the tummy or vice versa. And similarly, of course, also the rate of breathing. So somebody just before they're going to run a race compared to after they ran the race, of course, there would be a distinct difference in their breathing. If you start talking to somebody and maybe they get a little bit upset, maybe their breathing increases. We're not saying what the change means. We're just saying within context, it may mean a certain thing. Next, we've got lower lip size. And for lower lip size, we're not so much noticing that the lip is getting any fatter. What we're noticing is actually that the lines in the lips get diminished or disappear. So as the blood vessels get filled with blood, so of course the lines may disappear. So similar to if you took a balloon out of a packet. Before you blow it up, it might be creased and you see little lines in it. And then as you blow air into it, then it stretches out. And that's what you might notice with the lips, that the lines disappear. Next, we've got the eyes. And with the eyes, we can notice, are the eyes focused or defocused? Are the pupils dilated or undilated? You've noticed that if you look at somebody and there's a lack of light, then the pupils will be bigger. Then if you switch the light on, then the pupils will contract a bit and get smaller. In fact, you could do that for yourself. Look in a mirror, turn the light on, turn the light off. Notice how the pupils contract to let in less or more light. Now, these are just five simple things. And as I said, you can notice whatever you notice. In fact, they asked Milton Erickson one day, they said, Dr. Erickson, how did you know that lady went into trance? And he said, I noticed because the pulse on her left ankle slowed down. 
Wow, well, that's wonderful sensory acuity. And these five things are certainly five easy things for you to start practicing with. And you can do this as an exercise. Team up with somebody, whether it be a friend, a family member, or somebody at work, and get a baseline for what they look like. Then ask them to think of somebody that they really like, and notice whatever shifts you notice. Then you want to do a break state, so get them to think of something totally different. Then ask them of somebody that they really disliked. Again, do a break state, so getting them to think of something totally different. And then have them think of either the person they liked or disliked without telling you whom it is. And then you go ahead and notice if you can find out whether it is the person that they like or dislike based on the shifts that you see within them. As an example, if we looked at Steve Irwin, yeah, that might be a normal baseline. And then something happens. Now, we're not saying what it is. But something has happened and of course there's a shift in the client. So notice the eyes, the lips, the jaws, whatever it is that you notice that indicates that there was a shift within the client. Good. So that's observing uh, other people and learning how to start practicing your sensory acuity. And in the next session we'll talk about rapport.